All right, everybody, welcome to Healed Because God Said So. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and good to see everybody uh, this evening. Um, good to have our panel with us. Uh, Dr. Cindy will be joining us shortly. We have Apostle Jermaine Thomas and Apostle Joshua Hart, uh, one from Illinois and the other one next door in Australia. And so uh, uh, we're, we're rolling. So uh, good to see everybody uh, tonight. Uh, already a ton of people are joining us. We're very glad. Uh, I think people really ex appreciate these broadcasts and really appreciate what's being said and what's going on as we're really addressing um, how to change the way you think and uh, more. So uh, anyway, uh, we've been talking about what is prophecy today. Now, this is part number three, and we will be going to uh, a different subject next time. But um, anyway, uh, this has been good. So uh, as we've been talking about this, uh, the, the truth is that prophecy takes on many forms uh, when it comes to the delivery of the message. And sometimes we get in that church mode, and it's yea, thus saith God, and and the yay and yay and yay and uh, and that's kind of you know where it is but that's not the only way uh you know i've went up to people and said you know the lord told me to tell you that he loves you and that's a form of prophecy so it really is a lot of different ways so uh what is prophecy in the simplest form we're going to talk about that tonight we're going to go a little bit different direction and read from revelation chapter 19 verse 10 and then get our panel turned loose on this uh just from to start with the new king james version uh here is here is jesus delivering this message commissioned by the father he's delivering it to the apostle john in a symbolic language and i don't want to go back to revelation 1 verse 1 but the point is is that uh here john the, the scriptures as this this scenario approaches uh, uh, john fell at his feet to worship jesus which is the one that delivered the message but he said to me see that you do not do that i am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Here's what he says, worship God. Now worship God, God is a, a generic name, like, like a title, Mr. or Mrs. or et cetera, uh, but really, really uh, infers the Godhead, uh, the creator. He says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now I have a lot of things myself to say about this, uh, having taught on this uh, uh, quite a bit, uh, but I wanna get our panel going on this tonight because uh, what we're seeing here just real briefly is uh, uh, angels who deliver this message, but really angels is, is translated as messengers, uh, or I call them heavy, heavenly messengers, uh, or ministering spirits from the unseen realm. They're spirit beings from the cloud of witnesses where we all dwell, even though we have a human form appearance uh, at this time. So uh, as we're talking about what prophecy is and how it really does relate to us today, Apostle Jermaine, uh, uh, we missed you last week, but I'm glad you're here tonight, and I want to cut you loose on this. So uh, we want to hear what you have to say about this. Sure, and I just want to say uh, the brother that stepped in for me uh, last week was phenomenal. I was able to jump in on the live broadcast. So if he's watching, salute you, sir. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, just... just um, as you were talking, um, I think, you know, unpacking the reality of, of, of who Jesus is or Christ, um, it, it, the cosmic voice of God, you know, the, the, the universal heart of Father revealed or unveiled, um, cool. you know, uh, made plain for man to understand that we, we call him um, the logos or the logic of God. He revealed the reasoning, um, the intentions of Father's heart. Um, there was no more guessing. There was no more assuming, um, you know, to to what Father's true heart and intentions were. Jesus gives us or uh, unveiled for us a perfect picture, you know, of the logos or the logic or the reasoning, you know, of this uh, cosmic voice, if you will. 
um, of Father's heart in, the, in revealing his heart and his intent. Um, and not, it's, it's not a, like you said, God is in and of itself is a generic term. Um, but this was this is this wasn't to um, prophecy wasn't to affirm religion. It wasn't to reinforce you know a a a a, a context or contrast of, of 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 understanding God. It was not to reinforce a a system um, of 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 religion. Mm -hmm. It was to it was there, this is a, an eternal reality made manifest in, in, in a uh, timeline, human felt realm of reality, an eternal, re an eternal voice uh, that, that I guess you could say catch up with time in some sense, because <laughs> God is all knowing, you know, he's Alpha and Omega. So, you know, we get to experience that um, I'm, I'm in this timeline reality, but we, we were a certain of heart and of one heart and one mind, you know, if we consider our origin, um, if we consider uh, if we consider an eternal reality, um, like he told Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, prophecy is not just the fourth telling, but it's just the reality, you know, of, of Father's heart. Um, you know, that agreement, uh, I, I think Brian Christian uh, capitalizes on this when he talks a lot about it, you know, those reminders to let us know that we, you know, this, this agreement uh, that we made in, in eternity past, if you will, um, to walk out this life uh, in, in this timeline reality, you know, the prophecy comes along to remind us of those conversations, uh, to peer back into um, that mystery, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to reveal those uh, dialogues and conversations, you know, even in Revelations, it paints this picture, you know, of, of this thing going on, and and they say, well, who's going to go? <laughs> uh, and and and, he, and and the Lamb of God was like, here, send me, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, I think, you know, in some aspects, I think we all were like, hey, send me. <laughs> uh, so prophecy, in some sense, you know, comes to. Uh, remind us, you know, or to adjust us, if you will, um, to make sure we're walking into um, that predetermined uh, agreement of life lived in this reality. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, you know, it's really amazing. Your last week we did have a great show, and I did appreciate uh, Apostle Brett uh, standing in uh, and, and just helping out, and it's really cool. Um, so. Apostle Josh, as as we're uh, rolling with this tonight, uh, John, I can imagine here John is in prison. Okay, he's in prison for the testimony of, of Jesus. He just wouldn't shut up. In other words, <laughs> I think that's that's cool of him and necess so necessary in that day. Uh, but the thing is, uh, here he is uh, in prison, and this vi these visions are happening. He's so overwhelmed from the contents of what he's seeing in these visions that. All of a sudden, he falls to his feet and, and he begins to worship the messenger. And, uh, you know, it's amazing uh, that we've come all of this way talking about the eternal Christ, um, who, who is and was and is still manifesting in our awareness. And he doesn't treat John uh, in a way that would cause John to continue to think, hey, you need to lay there and you need to worship me. But he says, you're my fellow brethren. You're, mm -hmm. you're a part of me. Uh, we're one. You, you can't take out the as he is, so are we in this world scenario. And so he's really preaching oneness and inclusion to John. So uh, what do you see in here, my brother? Yeah, uh, there's a beautiful scripture. Um, I see... Um, I think uh, the, one of the key words in the scriptures is the word testimony, mm. the word um, materia. And this word here means um, to, be a, to be a witness. And um, uh, I'll just read one of the definitions here. It says, the office committed to the prophets of testifying concerning future events. And... <clears throat> For, for me, uh, what I see is um, the spirit of prophecy is this vantage point that we get to speak from beyond the veil, that we get to look at the 
you know, as prophetic people, you know, and God has placed this spirit of prophecy within in through all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to peer and look at the evidence beyond the veil um, of what is, what is another definition of this um, word for um, testimony or the, the, the English transliterated word martyr means one who sees the evidence. Mm -hmm. And I love that because we, we are so privileged as um, sons of God to get to look at the evidence, to get to look beyond the veil at the, um, the, this testimony. And we get to reveal this, all of us, you know, to, to speak the same as. And that's what prophecy is. All we're doing is speaking from what we're seeing beyond the veil into the realm that, um, into a realm that is uh, governed by time, space, and matter. Uh, and so in what may seem like something that unfolds on a timeline uh, is really the reality is it's always been. And it's like when John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God who take the sin away from the world. He's, he peered up into that realm beyond the veil. He saw the evidence and he got to decree it and, and uh, speak it into the earth what has always always been and we know this because the scriptures also says that the lamb was slain since the foundation yes. of the world Why? So yeah the, and this is what i mentioned last week one of the greek verbs is is the arrows it which means on horizon or undefined and it, it speaks it's a snapshot picture of an action that um, you know, depending um, on the way the arrows is used, whether it's in the aggressive, the uh, consumative, or the batic, what, however it is used, whether it's a, the capture the action at the beginning uh, or at the end, or uh, the proleptic to, as it continues through, then we get to see an action nonetheless of what has happened in the mind of God before we get to have a look at it. You know, on the veil. So what God is doing, he's revealing this to us through this prophetic nature that we, an ability that we have, all of us, you know, and all we got to do is become as one of those prophets, if, if I can say it that way, to end to prophesy what we're seeing beyond the revelation or behind the re removal of the veil, you know. Yeah. And so I see the testimony of Jesus is us witnessing what has always been and yeah. what always is um, by and speaking the same as and as we speak the same as it just so happens that our words hit the realm of time and it starts to uh, <laughs> behind the roll mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, in, in this in this realm um, yeah so I'll just throw that back to you and there's a lot more I could say about that but yeah yeah yeah, that's that's so good uh, yeah. because really we are prophesying or speaking from the place of the Father's mind. Uh, I know Scripture a lot of times will say from the Father's heart, but really yeah. it's the Father's mind, and we do understand that. Uh, good to see Dr. Cindy joining us tonight. Uh, good to see you, my sister. Uh, she's still got her audio rolling there. Um, I know Scripture a lot of times will say from the Father's heart. But really, um, I'm getting some feedback from somewhere. Me too. Somebody got a second device on. Um, audio rolling there. I know. Let me see what I can do about that. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Is that better? There we go. Yep. Yep. That's good. Okay. Good to see you, Dr. Cindy. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to be safe out, out of the Atlanta traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's always uh, a, a good thing. Uh, so, as we're talking about Revelation 19.10, uh, it is said here that, uh, that uh, the, the messenger really is Jesus. And Jesus is telling John, you know, really, uh, he's just treating him like he is. Uh, let me just say it this way. He's treating him in the same reflection of himself, just like Father mirrored himself in us mm -hmm. or as us. And, and so I really love that about, uh, about the eternal Christ, that he isn't making a difference. But let me just tell you something, guys. Uh, religion actually 
thinks that what we're doing is is quite sacrilegious, quite uh, uh, offensive to even think that we are as he is. And yet in the scriptures, it clearly spells out as he is, so are we. Uh, that when the Lord preaches oneness, preaches that we are one uh, in the same, we are the, of the many-membered body of the one of that eternal Christ. And, and so I, I think there's a real problem today. And I, I so appreciate what Apostle Josh and Apostle uh, Jermaine uh, said to kick this off. And we're going to get Dr. Cindy in on this. But I think the real problem today is that, uh, that people who, uh, there are people who think it's wrong to see themselves as Christ. Now, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm God. And I've had a lot of, 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 uh, of of study time on uh, this at issue that David talked about in the, in the, from the Hebrew language, that there is a hair width difference between the creator and the creation. And I honor my creator and I respect that. But now when it comes to who the persona of Jesus in the earth, Jesus didn't come, you know, we used to preach Jesus came uh, as us and he came for us, but but he didn't really come for us. He came as us because yeah. he did what we couldn't do. Uh, what we needed to do was get reconnected with the truth of, of who we are. And we didn't know how to do that. Uh, it was no, no great sin, no great travesty on our part, but it was the fact that it just, we just couldn't make it happen. So, so he came for that purpose. And so as we talk about this spirit of prophecy, we talk about Revelation 19.10. Uh, Dr. Cindy, uh, what do you think about this? Because we really are seeing ourselves as Christ. We're seeing the one city of God with a multi-membered expression in the midst of it. Uh, so talk to us tonight. So let's go back to when we were all little children and we were listening to people explain to us as a child um, what Jesus came to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we go back to that because I go back to um, when I, whenever I have to answer a question to, for an adult, I usually mm -hmm. like to go back to a child, a child's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's where I believe the most powerful understanding uh, is mm -hmm. in the yeah. in the mindset of a child, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you're talking to a child and you're telling them about Jesus and telling them about the Father, mm -hmm. you say things like, you know, whenever the Father looks at you, he sees Jesus. Mm. and we tell kids that but do we believe that come on. come on do we believe that when the father looks at us he sees jesus mm. he sees his son in us come he on. sees us in him he doesn't see us as different come on jesus see and when we go back to that perspective as a child um, and if we will really own that, own that truth that the father sees us, he sees Jesus. So yes, we are Christ in this earth, on this earth. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. So everyone, um, you know, that's watching now, that's because this is going to uh, be on for many, many years to come, you know, other people will, years from now, they'll tune in and hear this conversation. And it doesn't matter because this transcends time. Yes. And this is global. This is, yeah. this transcends yeah. time. This transcends come all uh, countries, or even if you're out uh, on the ocean somewhere, like if you're out there on the ocean and you're mm. on a ship and you're watching this, it doesn't matter what ocean you're on or if you're on an airplane, you could be on any plane in any sky, anywhere or around the world on mm -hmm. land or sea or in the air. It doesn't matter, nor does it matter any time because Jesus Christ, Christ, the anointed one in his anointing transcends all location and all time. Right. He is always, I am, he is the mm -hmm. I am which is a present tense verb. Am is a present tense verb, right? Mm. So he is in the present tense no matter where or when that is. And mm -hmm. we are as he is. And so 
that you said the spirit, uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. So that would mean our testimony is the spirit of prophecy. Come on. And that would mean since we identify with the Lord Jesus now and the Christ, which he, he is, and we are together with him. And we've been seated together in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. And mm. so we are in a very high Christ consciousness, okay? We have mm. ascended in our thinking, in our mm. awareness, in our reality. And all mm. this might sound crazy to a religious mindset, but how many knows here we're not religious? We, mm. we, we have stepped away from that. Because that is bondage. We know that's bondage. That's not freedom. And what we're speaking about right now is something Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And we're talking about freedom here tonight, guys. We're mm -hmm. talking about liberty and freedom and, and unlimited potential. I, I think it's fabulous. And that's really what the prophetic is. It transcends all barriers and limitations. Mm. and it connects us with the unlimited potential of god how about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and you know the beautiful thing is is yes uh if we are truly as he is and that's what the bible says if we're truly one with the christ mind uh if we are seated with the christ mind the essence of christ in in the heavenly places now places is not a word that really translated right in the king james but it's really in the heavenly christ and if that's who we are okay then we're going to have to think better of ourselves yeah. uh, we, we do have a couple of questions one uh greg parker says in revelation did john prophesy or was he describing a dream it was a vision and there were words that were coming to him from a in a from a pros, prophetic standpoint okay mm -hmm. but 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 what he were learning from John is that the words we speak are the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy or the essence of prophecy. And so, uh, you know, here's the thing. And, and uh, you know, I, I see what Elaine has written there. And, and here's what I would, would say to that, that when we say, or if we say, I'm never going to make it. Do, do you realize we just prophesied into our situation? Okay. Mm -hmm. Every word I speak cut from the abundance of the heart or the mind, the mouth speaks. And every word I speak prophesies or declares something that has an impact on me. You know, I'm, I'm a person that when the tornadoes uh, come and we haven't had any for quite a while, uh, I go outside and talk to them. Yes. I go into restaurants and they say, I think we're going to have to lock up and you're going to have to leave. I say, give, give me a moment. Let me go outside and talk to the tornado. <laughs> and people think that's weird. Uh, but you know, either you believe that you are as he is or you don't believe you are as he is. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can do that, then I can speak to an array of other things, everything relating to me. Um, you know, Philippians 1 verse 21, we've talked about this so much, but, uh, but Paul said in the New King James, he said, for me, uh, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And Paul was not saying that he had to physically die in order to know Christ more, but only to die to any form of self-effort or or self-awareness and to live by the Christ mind within. So I think that's so awesome that we're not seeing that, hey, if I'm going to be like Christ, if I'm really going to know him, then I got to be dead. Okay. You know, you know, I've told this before that when my dad uh, died, uh, my, I heard my dad's voice from the other side and I heard my dad speak of how he could have stayed here. That's because the moment he got there, there were things that he was in, in the great cloud of witnesses. Uh, and it's just cloud of witnesses. Great is a word that's added in so much in the King James, but it's just cloud of witnesses. Uh, but when he got there, he had a full awakening to the Christ mind. Well, that's what we're doing, trying to achieve here. And I was teaching the other day and I, I don't know, uh, I think it was uh, in my, my revelation class in, in the college. And I was talking about how this, the, we were never, so you think about this. Do you know when Jesus was transfigured? And, and guys, I'm really stirred up. I've had a, uh, some, some challenges this morning, but, but uh, you know, what I told the person is, you know, challenges are meant to be overcome. Uh, they called them something else. I called them challenges. Uh, and I, I, but, but here's the thing. Uh, the, the, on, the on the Mount of Transfiguration, do you know that the physical body of Jesus was transfigured? 
Mm. Okay, do you realize, and you guys know this, and I'm talking to the, the choir here, but for everybody watching tonight, do you realize that that was before the cross, or let's say it this way, before he was crucified and went into the tomb? So mm. he was already changed before death. He was already changed so that in death, he would come out of death for us, putting, putting, uh, taking care of, of this, this thing about death that never was a part of the creation of God in the first place. So think mm -hmm. about that. He wasn't transfigured in the tomb. He was transfigured before he ever went there. And mm -hmm. so what I see is Jesus gets up out of the grave in resurrection and, and after two days after Passover, and now eight days later, he meets the disciples in Galilee, spends 40 days with them, doing one thing and one thing only, showing them, I am alive. I came back from the grave, just like I said I would do. And, and he even walks through the wall or teleports from one side to the other and eats fish like a human person would be hungry. He was hungry, but yet he was fully spirit. So we have the combination of spirit walking around in, in a flesh awareness. Think about that. That's who we are transforming to. Now, the thing is that uh, afterwards, what people have a hang up about, and, and man, I, I'm not get, I don't think I'm getting off of it. I think I, really this is really um, uh, clarifying this, that Jesus doesn't, go up into heaven but he is encompassed by the cloud yeah the cloud jesus was the singular cloud but do you know what manifested out of that the clouds plural he's coming mm. in clouds or manifesting in clouds he literally went into the cloud of witnesses which we are and so mm. This is prophetic tonight in that you don't have to be down and discouraged and giving up and, and confused and upset about the things that are going on around us right now. You can be encouraged and you can be excited and yeah. you can declare this. Yeah. Is, you know what? I told someone the other day, I said, nothing's going wrong in our country because this ain't their country. This is my country. Amen. I'm in charge of this planet. And so are you. And we need to act like that. And we need to prophesy from that perspective. Apostle Jermaine, talk so I can shut up. No, you're talking real good, sir. I, I was sharing on, uh, on, on the show, on my show, Sunday School Live, and I was talking about <laughs> that very thing. You know, we uh, in social work, we take what we call a strengths based perspective. You know, a person that comes into a situation or crisis circumstance, you know, we don't we don't highlight, you know, their deficits. I mean, that's to the obvious, that's to the obvious, you know, but what we do is we help them to identify their core strengths and we give them the resources and the tools that they need to capitalize on that and utilize that. And so whenever we come into a situation or circumstance in life, because great is he that is in us and he that is in the world, you know, we deal, we don't deal with life on life terms. We deal with life from a strength-based perspective, Amen. a reality, you know, and so, we get to prophesy to our situation, you know, let the, let the sick say they're healed, you know, so heal because God said so, you know, we get to speak, you know, from a different dimensional eternal reality, which is a present reality. And so when I was talking about heaven, I was saying that, you know, that was to use the mountain of transfiguration as a, an example. I said okay. in, in that moment, uh, in that transfiguration moment, uh, Jesus, it, when Moses and uh, Elijah steps out of eternity, it doesn't say they came out from heaven somewhere. And so that just lets us know you, that would lead you to conclude that uh, heaven and earth is this, this uh, reality that's, that's imposed upon each other. You know, there is no separation of the two. Yes. You know, it's, it's as Dr. K said, where spirit slowed down to visibility. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Heaven is not uh, 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 out there somewhere. You know what I mean? It's, it's a reality now. It's a present reality now. You know, it's just a matter of our awareness or in that moment of being unveiled where Jesus, you know, uh, uh, that transfigured moment of glory or awareness came, you know, where uh, Elijah and Moses stepped out of eternity. So, you know, eternity, you know, we have this a fixation 
because of religion and because of religious conditioning um, that, you know, the hope to grab a hold of Christ. And that's what I believe uh, what was said in this scripture, you know, that if somehow that if I die, that that's that that's going to help me to obtain something more. No, no we have this wrong of fixation with heaven out there when it's a reality now. OK, yeah. you know, so it's not something to be more like yeah. that graduate you know to a greater awareness no the awareness of the reality is now and so uh, yeah. uh up to uh philippians one it says paul says uh my thoughts are not trapped in my head uh they wow. roam free this is the mirror translation they roam free in expectation that i will not be ashamed by any of my contradictions uh my immediate circumstance do not distract from my message I am convinced that our conversation now and always will continue to give an accurate account of the magnificence of Christ. And I think that's what Dr. Uh, Cindy was saying is now is a reality that's now. And so we can, mm -hmm. as you were talking about, Bishop, it's, it's a reality of joy now, uh, not in a situational joy, not a circumstantial joy. You know, joy is the nature uh, uh, it's a it's a nature of ours. It's a perceived reality that you can mm -hmm. walk in every day of your life because you deal yeah. with life no yeah. longer on a life by life basis terms, but a God, a divinely being uh, inspired being. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Rob Bell. He said, it, "We're not human doing; we're human being." Amen. That's right. Amen. That's, that's good. And sometimes we don't take those little uh, uh, analogies, those little uh, sayings and, and, and um, preface them. Uh, you know, uh, guys, I, I, I know what we talk about is, you know, I would say is kind of hardcore. It's probably meat eaters type uh, material. But this is what I would say. Uh, you know, when you get four people together like us and you begin to talk about this stuff, uh, it, it's, it's hard to hold back and to serve ice cream and cake or, or to serve uh, hors d'oeuvres. Uh, but but because I remember when I first started teaching the book of Revelation verse by verse, I'm uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be in lesson number 187. And uh, in Revelation 22, verse uh, five through seven. And I started out with Revelation one, verse one, and simple Greek definitions of words and things. And, you know, it's escalated to seeing the end result of the beginning um, uh, seeing the end result of, of the beginning when we look at the end from the beginning, and it's really beautiful. But I would just say this, that one way for everybody watching tonight, one way to bring about this revelation within our soul is to prophesy from within or out of the Christ mind from the inside out. And what I mean by that is that we can begin to declare things. So, so this is what I would declare. I would declare what, to what, uh, what I understand. You know, you, you can't always, you, you can declare what you're hearing on this show, and that's okay, but I would just take the stuff that I've come to understand, the things that are solid in me. You know, Dr. Cindy said that the spirit of prophecy is for everyone, and mm -hmm. uh, before I get to uh, Apostle Josh here, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3 through 5, he says, but he who speaks, uh, prophesies, speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church, or I would say uh, the creation. Uh, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied, and for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with a tongue, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So when we speak, there's got to be, there's a motivation behind it. So what, what is the motive? What are you trying to do? Um, I've had some excessive health challenges of late. That's all they are is challenges. Again, challenges are meant to be overcome. Uh, these, health, these health challenges uh, have a tendency to motivate my mouth in one direction or another, depending on what the situation is. And that's the same with all of us. And so we need to learn to prophesy to our situation, prophesy mm -hmm. out of our, our understanding to the circumstance we may be dealing with. We're still in this human awareness realm, folks. And so there's some things we deal with from time to time and we need to speak to them. Uh, Apostle Josh, uh, please go ahead. Yes, amen. Um, I think we, um, we, we do, um, when we speak from that realm, we, sometimes we can 
you know, we can prophesy or speak and miss, or we can sort of uh, miss the mark. <clears throat> you know, I shared last, I think it was last week about sin. Um, sin means to miss the mark in, in the Greek, so the Hebrew words, uh, you know, I broke down the, the Hebrew word for sin, which is kata, and it's made up of three Hebrew um, pictographs, which is the first one is het, which is a picture of a um, which is a picture of a wall or a fence, and it means to separate and divide. Uh, then the second letter is tet, which is a picture of a basket, which means to surround or enclose. And last one is the aleph, which is a picture of an ox head, which means strength. Um, and so when, to sin, um, for me, my understanding is when um, we are enclosed in a place that separates, uh, it, it speaks of the strength of that, that which encloses and separates us from hitting the mark. Um, and Paul talks about, you know, pressing for the, the mark, you know, and, and, but he, he says that that to to hit that mark or to press for that mark, that prize of the high calling, it's in Christ that we do that. You know? But here we will uh, in sin, and this is where God has just been showing me a bit more about sin and what that is. When we're when we're cloaked in and veiled in sin, then we've got no chance at hitting the mark. You know, we because there's this our focus or. Um, is um, is skewed, or it's um, because we have this thing in this veil in between us that uh, stops us from hitting the mark. And I think a lot of people think when the definition of sin to um, uh, hitting the mark, we get a picture of an archer with a clear, open view of a target, mm -hmm. and just you know shooting it off, you know, uh, and, and and missing the, the target. But when you have a wall in between you and the target. And when you're, when you're covered in a huge basket or you're covered in fig leaves or we put on a different identity, um, then we're, it's impossible for us to hit the mark. And the way God showed me <clears throat> about us, and Father, give me a, a concrete picture in, that I can understand. And he showed me um, of a son that has a, <clears throat> excuse me, that has a, uh, an abusive father, and that son is walking on eggshells or on thin ice than that father. So he modifies his behavior. He cloaks himself. He can't be who he really is under the under the uh, the, uh, the gaze of this uh, tyrannical, um, angry uh, father. Why? And we uh, this is what we projected. As Christians, we, we, we've, we've labeled God as this angry God. This is our own prediction. And, and so we, then we adjust our behavior. We modify our behavior, um, align ourselves with our paradigm. And we, we act in accordance. So why? Because we have to be a good boy. Uh, we, have to be, we have to be a good boy for, so we don't upset an angry God, an angry father. Right. And, and also, and, and uh, as Christians, what we've done is we've, um, we, we dob in our siblings too. Mm -hmm. So we can get brownie points, you know, with, with, to appease our, our angry, angry father. And so we like to point out the sin in other people's lives. That's good. Uh, so the, the thing is this, is that sin isn't, for me, it's not defined by the act, the sin is defined by the cloak. It's, it's by this mistaken identity. It's, it's, it's defined by um, us being uh, covering ourselves with this false identity and uh, of who we think we are and trying to uh, appease um, an angry God. But, but listen to this. If you take out the angry God uh, doctrine, if you take out the, the hell doctrine, you know, the punishment thing. If you, if you take out all these fear-based things that causes a child of God, a son of God to cower and to, and to, to uh, perform or to modify his behavior to become a good boy, right? if you take that out, 
then that son is allowed to become who he has always been. Yes, come on. Anything awesome. feared by is not of God. Any, that, that's what, you know, what I'm seeing more and more is that you know, we have crippled ourselves into modifying our behavior to become something else and then to work for something we already are. To be a good boy, to be a good that's boy. That's good. Yeah. But you, there is no fear in love. There's none. Of, and that's what yeah. God is telling us now. You're appearing behind the veil with this prophetic unction, this prophetic understanding of seeing the evidence. Okay. This, I'm looking at the evidence, the, wit the witness, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit behind the prophecy that we're, we're talking about here today. That we, so, we have a loving dad. Yeah. Not an angry dad. And he doesn't want to punish us to an eternal punishment, you know, of, the, of, uh, of eternal conscious punish punishment. He wants us to, to run into his arms and realize that, hey, you were never, ever separated from me, son. I've always loved you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is oh, that's uh, awesome. Cloak yourself in some fig leaves and some mud and whatever else it is. And you've projected uh, a, a false uh, re, uh, a, a, a false picture of who I am. Yeah. Now, and, and this this picture, this <laughs> this uh, this false image, uh, really is a, an identity of being separated from the Father, uh, because every time I I try to hide, every time I try to run, it's because I'm feeling emotionally like there's no connection with my my daddy with my father and um you know that's the thing about this mistaken identity yes the, uh the, the word sin uh hamartia in the greek and then you add that the ha comes from the hebrew that means to be without and the, the martia which is uh um um uh, to be mistaken uh and 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 really what i found is really missing the mark is just it's missing the mark of god and you know the mark of god is missing the mark of his mind understanding his mind towards you and and apostle josh you're right you know even when we look at uh, i think it's first john four um is it um 18 uh that says that uh there's no fear in love Perfect love casts out all fear. You know, if you read that from the Living Bible, it becomes really, really, really clear. That's not talking about our love because see, that's what we've done in Christendom. Uh, Dr. Cindy's, we've tried to get our love perfected. We tried to love better. We put on this self effort act of trying to treat people better, smile more, thinking that's really what god was talking about but in essence really if you want to be better to, toward people or nicer toward people learn to understand that father god loves you and he's loving you without judgment he's not pointing the finger at you even though many times you feel a finger pointed at you what you're <laughs> feeling is it's here here's the truth folks it's called self-condemnation yeah, yeah. Finger it yourself. It's those unrenewed thoughts in your mind that we've called the devil and Satan all of these years. Those unrenewed thoughts that are just, just la that actually you see that in the, the dark pit in the book of Revelation, the, the pit where the locusts come out of and they, and those stinging locusts that bite you, they're biting those, those, that the truth that's trying to, to get a hold of, of, uh, and fill the light of God in that, in that dark pit of, of uh, unrenewed thinking. And the truth is, is that yes sometimes the transformation process dr cindy isn't that easy and it doesn't come without struggle but oh my goodness there is a point i will say this there is a point a breakthrough that you come to where the struggle in my opinion seems to be over it's like okay yeah there's some challenges in life but it ain't no big deal because the struggle part is over i know who i am and i know how my daddy feels about me and so all of those things we prophesy we yes. declare. I mean, do you realize that the same thing about the spirit realm? You know who you are. If and and apostle Jermaine, uh, 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 I think said this about Dr. K saying, "We're spirit slowed down to visibility." So we come through the portal of our mother's womb into the, the this human uh, form awareness. But did you know it didn't change who we were? We're still spirit. We just slowed down the visibility. We move so fast, just like uh, the, the heavenly host moves so fast. The speed of light, man, the human eye can't see it. I, I can show you that in scripture. But here's the thing is slowing down the visibility doesn't change who I am. I'm still spirit. 
but I got so enamored by all of this stuff going around that I forgot who I was. I looked away from the perfect law of liberty and forgot what kind of person I was. And you know what? Mm. It still didn't change who I was. I just forgot. And Dr. Cindy, that's the thing about Jesus being the spirit of prophecy. I, I want to I read uh, something real quick that you said, if I can get uh, my, my uh, wake up my tablet here. Uh, you said the, uh, the motive, uh, uh, the motive should, well, I, I think I just kind of reworded this a little bit. The motive should be establishing the kingdom that is of God by tearing down toxic mindsets and building up healthy mindsets. How do people accomplish that? Oh my goodness. Um, well, it's, it takes a minute, you know, it's not like uh, the matrix where Neo gets a download, you know, of the, <laughs> the green pill. Of the, you know, the, there's a little portal, little port, you know, in the back, but wouldn't that be great? You know, if that just happened and it was like, boom, yeah. Hey, we have the mind of Christ now let's go. Um, <laughs> but usually it's a little process and I would encourage people to find your truth tribe Find some yeah, people yeah. who walk with you in truth, who aren't afraid to embrace this. Uh, because you know what? Whenever you've been indoctrinated, you know, many of us came out of indoctrination yep. uh, from denominations. Um, and they didn't know that. They didn't mean any harm, I don't think. I think they no. were just ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yet so many of us came out of that. And so... When you first start walking in a righteousness consciousness, um, you start to feel um, arrogant. I mean, that was the first thing I thought about. Oh my gosh, I can't be one with Jesus. How arrogant, you know? How, who do you think you are, young lady? You know, you start feeling like that. Like, hey, you better dial it down, girl. You know, uh, excuse me. And so that, that sin consciousness rises up and you start remembering, oh, how horrible you are and all the bad things you did. In other words, you've built this whole paradigm of thinking around uh, your actions as opposed to what Jesus did. It all goes back to the grace message, basic grace message. We're not saved by what we do. We were saved by what Jesus did. You know, it's not by our work, should anybody boast, you know, but it was about what Jesus, it goes back to the basics. And I think sometimes we get like way out on a tangent someplace, you know, we keep going way off and we keep going way out there and it all comes back to the basics. And you just said the motivation of prophecy um, as we all prophesy, which I, okay, at our church in here in Atlanta, the porch. Uh, one of our missions is that we pastor prophets. So anybody who comes in the door is a prophet. You've been given the spirit of prophecy. Here you go. Because if Jesus is your in your heart, when you know, or you, you're in him, he's in you, then you have that prophetic gifting in you. So we stir up those gifts and everybody, and everybody prophesies. And, and the apostle Paul said, I wish every one of you would do it. I would then all prophesy. Mm -hmm. So we like to raise up prophetic people and we like to uh, create a culture of prophets and where they don't, where they call those things, which be not as though they were, mm -hmm. they speak out in faith. When they hear the spirit to say something, they see God doing something. They say that, you know, mm -hmm. they speak that forward. God does nothing until he first revealed it to his servants, the prophets. And now we're even more than servants. We're friends, right? We've talked about that in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We're beyond the servants. Now we're friends. Now that's even better. So yeah. it, it always gets better, guys. It goes from glory to glory, faith to faith. It, we never go back. It's always better than it was, you know. And that's what's so good about, like I say, hanging out with, I call it my truth tribe. There's people that I walk with, and y'all were some of those people, uh, in case you didn't know that. Um, I just wanted to let you know that <laughs> I walk with people that that are, um, you know, that are just seeking and and uh, expecting great things. Because you know, one of the seven spirits of God is a spirit of understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that you, Apostle Germain, have as a counselor, and what you do. God gives you great mercy because you understand. 
and when you have mercy, um, it, it comes with, you understand why somebody's behaving this way they are or why they're thinking the way they are because you get understanding from what you've studied clinically and also from the spirit of God has given you that in your heart. So you're able to be very, very uh, successful, relevant, you know, in what you do. And Apostle Joshua, you as well in your teaching gift, it's just flows. It flows the, the spirit of understanding. And that's what I feel like is right now on this show tonight. That, you know, one of the seven spirits of God that's coming out real strong, I'll say this prophetically, is that spirit of understanding. And those who are watching this, I just believe you're going to be able to understand what we're talking about. Like yeah. it's going to like click and you're going to go, oh my gosh, this is so easy. Duh. Yeah. And I want it to be that way. I, want, I believe that's whenever the spirit of understanding comes on you. You, you know, you are able to look past, uh, you know, the obvious. So, you know, it, it's like, why identify the obvious? Like, again, if someone's having challenges physically, you just, you just say, hey, I mean, you know what? That is not real. That's not real. That's yeah. not real. What's real is the is the finished work is is my body being completely renewed because jesus said i make all things new all mm -hmm. things are all things i don't care if it's a liver i don't care if it's a bladder feet knees hips yeah, regeneration yeah. is part of the new covenant and he mm -hmm. makes all things new he renews our mm -hmm. mind he renews our body he renews our soul he renews all everything that has to do with our being. He makes all things new, period. Come on. Yeah. And, and see, that's one of the things I love about this show is that uh, uh, one of the comments in our, our, our group uh, is that what we're doing is we prophesy or we speak words. Uh, we plant, we're planting seeds of hope. We're planting mm -hmm. seeds of faith, but here's the big one. Uh, we're especially planting the seeds of God's goodness because so many people don't know that God's good. I mean, just simply don't know that God is good. Uh, let me just say this. Whatever you read in the Old Testament that someone uh, taught you and interpreted for you and it portrayed a picture of a bad God, uh, you were just taught wrong. You, you look at the law and you say, well, look what God did. Now, wait a minute. It's not called the law of God. It's called the law of Moses. OK, Let, let's, not, let's not forget that there are look at what Job said. Job said, you know what, that, that uh, our days are limited. They're numbered. We're just miserable. We're going to be here a while. This is going to be over. God didn't say that. Job said that. I mean, there are so many things in Scripture that we need to pay attention to and realize that if it is not interpreted through the proper lens of God's love, then go back and look again. I, I want to say this. Dr. Cindy said this. She said that the key is uh, that this that 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 the key is uh, we have to speak in love. Uh, actually, when we do that, it tears down toxic mindsets and builds healthy mindsets. And, and I know it's what we're talking about tonight, but you know, this is really amazing because here John is in this situation where I can just imagine, because I've had some powerful visions from the Lord and, or, or even revelation that I get and, and you become so overwhelmed and, and, but, but, you know, you, you feel this degree of honor and respect and, and appreciation, but still Jesus is saying, look, don't, don't get too carried away here. You're still a part of me. We're still one in the same. And thank you, Dr. Cindy, for saying that tonight, that we are, um, as he is, uh, you know, we are Christ in the earth. Uh, and isn't it amazing that there is Christ, but there is Christ and there is Christ and there is Christ and there is Christ. And the person watching tonight, I'm going to give our panel a, a closing word tonight. Uh, we're we're uh, just before the top of the hour, but I want to say this, everybody watching tonight, you need to do, do a little uh, uh, internal checklist of what have you been prophesying to yourself? Yeah. What have you been saying about yourself? What have you been saying to yourself? And here's another one. Yes. What have you been saying about other people? What have you been speaking over them? 
um, how, how, check, do a checklist. And, and if it is not something that God would say to you now, if you, if you have this mind, like apostle Josh was talking about, if you have this mindset of a vengeful God, this picture of a mean God, a bad God that's waiting around for the good or the bad that you do. So he can either reward you or punish you. Uh, you're operating out of the tree of the knowledge, of good and evil. You're not operating mm-hmm. out of the tree of life. And, and so the fact is, is that if that's your picture, then you're mm-hmm. going to speak about yourself based on that internal image you have of the father but god is love how many times does the bible say god is love god is love god is love god is love oh wait a minute god is love (laughs) and and see that's what happens you have this awakening uh we're going to talk about tomorrow night on the show uh, i mean thursday night uh, about what an epiphany is and and you have this awakening that god is love and you no longer fear anything because your father uh, loves you so much. Apostle Jermaine, a closing word, please. Yeah, so it's, it's like the, uh, there, there's a paradox that's there. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's finished, it's done, it's a reality that's now. Um, but then you work through um, the contradictions, you know, that are there. And so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this is why he say you know, to say what he says and not what you feel. Mm. Um, and then eventually there becomes this experience, you know, where, you know, you been just waking up and you're still not woke. And then somebody look at you and say, you still, you, you're not woke yet, are you? <laughs> and then eventually yeah. Yeah. you wake up, you know, so it's, it's not an effort of, of trying to wake up. You wake up, it'll happen. And, and in an experience, nobody can take that away from you. I just want to leave with this verse. In 1 John 4, 17, out of the mirror translation, it reads, uh, so now with us awakening to our full inclu- inclusion in this love union, everything is perfect. Its completeness is not compromised in contradiction. Our confident conversation echoes this fellowship, even in the face of crisis, because as he is, so are we in this world. Our Mm. lives are mirrored in him. We are as blameless in this life as Jesus is. Oh, man. This perfect love union is the source, the strength-based perspective, guys. This perfect love union is the source of our confidence whenever we face the scrutiny of contradictions. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Amen. I, I mean, if you're beholding his face, you know what that is? It's not face to face. Here's the interpretation. It's face into face. You, you talk about God being in your face. He's in your face. Amen. Can I say this? He is your face. Yeah. <laughs> and you say, I, I don't look, I don't sound, feel it. I don't see it. I'm not getting that when I look at my face, but it doesn't change the truth. You're looking at the flesh and not beyond the veil of the flesh. Apostle Josh, a closing word. Amen. I've just got a scripture in the Hebrews 12, 1. We mentioned it before. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, um, let us lay aside every weight and sin yeah. that doeth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I just see clearly, um, you know, that th- this is, he'll, we've got four boxes on here in Zoom with four faces in them. Uh-huh. And we're part of that cloud of witnesses. We're, we're seeing the evidence behind the veil. And we're speaking it. We're speaking the life of what we're seeing. And we're, we're witnessing with the, those that are in the unseen realm, if I can say it that way. And we're laying aside or putting away or, or, or unveiling the weight and, and the sin, just ripping it off. That, and that's what easily besets us. Why? Um, while we're doing that, so we, can, so we can get a clear glimpse, a, a clear reflection of this face-in-to-face um, experience that you're talking about, Dr. Bill. Bless you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So good tonight, guys. Dr. Cindy, a closing word. Oh, goodness. I talk, well, I just want to say that um, 
years ago, and I mean a long time ago, I was sneaking around smoking cigarettes. Mm. My mother's cigarettes. I was smoking my mama's cigarettes. I was stealing them from her purse when I was a teenager. I'm just telling you. So I'm in the bathroom. This was a real thing that happened to me. I went in the bathroom sneaking around, right? So I didn't want her to know. And I opened up the window and, you know, puff, trying to puff out the cigarette smoke outside. And I'm in there trying to, you know, really learn how to smoke because it was making me sick. <laughs> and um, I was looking in the mirror and I was about to take a puff off of it. And I looked in my eyes and I saw Jesus' eyes in my eyes. Oh, man. I went, whoa, I saw Jesus' eyes in the mirror in my eyes, and I'm sitting there with a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And I, it's like Jesus said, really? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, you don't smoke, do you, Lord? He went, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Like, I smoked again. <laughs> hey, listen, let me tell you something. When you get a revelation and God opens up your eyes and you see him in you, for real? Man. Oh, that happened when I was a teenager. <laughs> and I, I haven't been able to tell a whole lot of people that. Y'all can get it. But some people go, are you, you must have, no, I never did drugs. It wasn't a hallucination. It was a revelation. It wasn't one of those kind of cigarettes. I hear you. <laughs> I, 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 I pray everybody listening will go look in the mirror and they'll see Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That's me with a hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> really, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so good, guys. This is so good. You know, it, it's so beautiful that the essence um uh, you know god says that the essence is that which can be found in all creation and i mm -hmm. read this that the the vastness of uh um of of the oceans to the canyons to the deserts to the extraordinary the infinite uh, array of, of wonderful and glorious things the essence of god every facet of god uh works uniquely in his creation and we're able to speak from that if we keep yeah. focusing on on the 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 the, the, the good bad and the ugly uh, the, the things of life um we will we miss it but if we focus on the eternal christ within just have this loving uh, in, in interaction of relationship i want to tell you it really does change things i love it when i'm sitting around watching tv and i feel like somebody's poking me in the ribs and i hear the father speak to me and say hey i love you oh <laughs> so cool yeah. Uh, yeah and i've told you this before but i mean i've, I've had times where i said oh, okay lord i get it leave me alone i'm watching tv <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, to have that bit, that much, uh, that comfortable uh, yeah. of, of relationship and fellowship with the Lord is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you guys so much for all of your input. Everybody watching, if you would click like and then click share and let other people know about this broadcast. Also, let me just say this in the morning, 10 a.m., and I'm still working on it, but in the morning, 10 a.m., I'll be teaching on Revelation 22, verse, verses 5 through 7. Uh, and then uh, Thursday night, Pastor Shay Watts will be my guest uh, as we talk about uh, at the epiphany of the revelation of Christ within. Uh, and then Friday morning, uh, Apostle Brian Christian is supposed to be on my show, and we're doing a series. So uh, a lot of good things going on. Uh, World Bible School University classes started uh, yesterday for this block, and uh, we're rolling um, I think Dr. Faye told me another 40 some students uh, enrolled and um, I don't know if they're active in class or not, but man, it's just, it's just going crazy. So uh, in a good way. So thank you all so much. And we will see everybody next week right here on uh, Healed Because God Said So. Uh, we yeah. love you all. Have a great evening. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Still trying to get off of 